Kia ora team, Coach Kumi here from 640S, bringing you our predictions for the CrossFit quarterfinals 2023. Now the four plans have just been released. Obviously there's a little bit there to assume what's going to be in those tests, but uh, it's always nice to have a little bit of a prediction and try to put ourselves in the frame of minds of which CrossFit uh, are thinking about how to program for these workouts. And also just as a, as a high level programmer, we tend to do this all year round and, and try and devise our training structures and programs based on what are uh, the tests that we're likely to see at certain stages of the season. So upon first look of the, the, the floor plans, what I notice is that there are a lot of gymnastics and high skill movements scattered throughout all of the workouts and in actually a couple of the workouts there are multiple high school gymnastic movements in the same workout. Um, there are also there's also a barbell in three of the different workouts. With that in mind, I think that the first thing that comes to mind for me is the conversation post open around some, I guess, highly regarded people and even just the community in general, if you go back and look through some of the threads, um, you know, the conversation around there being a barbell in three out of the four workouts in the CrossFit Open, it was uh, quite a high skill uh, CrossFit Open from what we've seen in the past. It seems to be that they've carried on the theme for that in, in this program for the quarterfinals. Now, I think that if you are trying to understand the tests and trying to understand what the picture could look like at the quarterfinals, you'd also have to take in consideration not just quarterfinals in the past, but age group division quarterfinals, the last chance qualifiers. Now that's no longer there. Do we see the incremental progressive steps of loads and high skill and uh, volume capacity as we see in the season from open to quarterfinals to the CrossFit Games or semi-finals CrossFit Games, do we see that intermediate step from not no longer having the last chance qualify becoming somewhat harder now in the quarterfinals? We also have to understand that the, 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 the needle has moved a, a hell of a lot in terms of um, the general CrossFit community's capacity within the CrossFit space and what they're able to achieve. Um, and it goes to show just for some really highly, highly touted athletes, um, no longer being able just to win every single workout or um, place a top 10 in every workout in, in their respective regions and whatnot. Um, you really are having to, to work a lot harder and be more well-rounded, except what we do know is that once you've gone through the CrossFit Open, you're no longer going to have those athletes that are running less than 100 reps and burpee pull-ups in the open and then doing a thruster at uh, 140 kilos or 310 pounds, um, affecting your leaderboard positioning. So with the quarterfinals, uh, looking at the first workout, I've just kind of got a couple of uh, suggestions per workout that I think that, that may be um, the pathway forward for, for, for how, how the thinking patterns are there. Take it with a grain of salt, I don't know what's written. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I do, uh, but I'd like to think that you know we, we would typically get something pretty close. And um, look, hey, again, it's a grain of salt, so if, if it's way off, um, yeah, I, I can take the blame for that too. However, looking at first uh, the first test, there is a barbell, there is a lined distance mark, there is a set of rings, gymnastics rings, and then there was also the wall taped line with the handstand push-up target that we had in the, uh, the CrossFit Open. Now, off the bat, we obviously know that there's going to be ring muscle-ups. We are unsure of what the, the uh, meterage would be. It could be either a shuttle run. Um, and it may also be a handstand walk. I don't think it'll be a very far different from those two movements. Um, the wall, wall hands, strict handstand push-ups, maybe kipping handstand push-ups, uh, potential for deficit handstand kipping push-ups, uh, potential for wall facing handstand push-ups, um, and then the, the barbell, I mean, the, the world's your oyster here. Um, however, I've gone for something that I think that could be here. I think that there's two options that we might see on day one, test one. One is either a short time domain, but heavy and high skill, being some sort of variation of King Kong. It's a classic workout for CrossFit. Um, and in my predictions, uh, I've got four rounds for time, two heavy deadlifts. Now that might be anywhere between 100 to 200 kilos for the males and 125 to 130 kilos for the ladies. Uh, three, three ring muscle ups. I'm not sure that we're ready to see strict ring muscle ups in the quarterfinals. However, I wouldn't put it past it. The only complication here is that 
the movement standard is going to be very uh, hard to judge from just general judges inside of a CrossFit gym as opposed to a semi-final field athlete uh, or, or, or style competition. Um, and I also think that ring muscle-ups as a general, just for the general 10%, uh, is going to be enough as, as, as three reps, I mean 12 total. You wouldn't see, I don't think that there was, and I don't know the numbers here, but maybe three to five percent of females actually not getting 10 or more ring muscle ups in the CrossFit Open workout. Um, so that might be a, a suggestion that we might only have 12 regular ring muscle ups in this workout. So two deadlifts, three ring muscle ups, four uh, strict handstand push ups might be wall facing, and then five shuttle runs. I just think that it fits the theme of King Kong. Um, it's heavy, it's high skill, it's short time domain, um, and we're taking away the power cleans that we would have seen from the general uh, original two bar. Um, complex in the original King Kong. Um, I've got an option two uh, for the for the first test and that is a longer time domain so that's actually on the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, it's a little bit of a remake from the the, the regional workout Nate. Two ring muscle ups, uh, sorry AMRAP for 20 minutes so this is a long time domain. Two ring, mu two ring muscle ups, four strict handstand push ups, now the barbell, you, you know, it's up to your imaginations. I've got here six deadlifts, uh, 315 pounds, males 205 for the ladies, or there could be power snatches, uh, something heavier I think, 155 and 105 pounds, um, and then eight shuttle runs. And that shuttle runs is just to kind of, uh, look, if you've got the capacity to walk, go through that, um, your gymnastics unbroken, you're probably gonna be running the shuttle runs a little bit faster. If you're not so adept in the in the gymnastics, you're probably gonna be recovering a little bit in the, in, in the shuttle runs. I think that that could be a great test as a 20 minute time frame. Moving on to test two, um, I've got just two options here. Um, I think that it's, it, it could be very close to a three rounds for time of 100 double unders and 20 alternating dumbbell snatches, 32.5 kilos or 70 pound, 50 pound, uh, male, female. I think that this is a short time domain that we need to, well, we don't need to, but it's a good test in that short time domain. Uh, we did see in the age group quarterfinals last year, uh, three rounds, 20 toaster bar, 20 uh, alternating dumbbell snatches, same weight. So there's 60 repetitions there. Uh, it was a sub five minute workout. I think that this uh, is capacity. It's uh, a little bit of a question mark. Do I go unbroken? How hard do I push the needle? Do I break my sets up on the on the dumbbell snatches? It's up for interpretation. Um, another option that I have here is a descending rep scheme of 180, 60, 40, 20 double unders, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10 alternating dumbbell snatch. That's 100 total dumbbell snatches. I think that that, that um, amount of dumbbell snatches could definitely be relevant for this competition. Uh, or I think that we might see for the first time a single arm dumbbells devil's press in this uh, in this workout. And I don't know what the rep scheme may be, but I don't think that this workout exceeds the kind of eight to 10 minute time domain. Test number three, uh, my option one, I think that this may be heavy clean and jerks and burpee box jump overs. We've already seen the power snatch and burpee box jump overs. So I think that uh, we're not quite ready to see a heavier barbell than what we've seen of those power snatch barbell for clean and jerks. So I think that this might be the same weight, 185 and 135 but more repetition. So we're looking at 21, 15 and nine, clean and jerks, burpee box jump overs, nice and simple. Capacity specific to CrossFit. Uh, you're looking at about a six minute time domain here, 10 minute time cap. Um, and it's very much so gonna make athletes kind of squirmish a little bit at it. Um, a little bit squirmish rather. And just because of, you know what that workout requires. You know that this requires hurt um, and, and a little bit of uh, grit. And on the other side of the coin of that, I think that the workout doesn't change too much. Um, I think that if it's not clean and direct at 185, it might be thrusters at 135. I do think that the rep scheme will be something like 21, 15 and nine thruster, burpee box jump over. The burpee box jump over may come down in rep, uh, rep scheme if the, the height of the box is at a 30 inch uh, for males and, and also 30 for females, but 24 for females might be the other, the other option. However, I think that we'll see a standardized 24, 20 inch burpee box jump over with the longer repetition scheme. And um, that would be the test three, the two options that I'm giving there. 
Test number four, I think that this is the long time domain workout uh, indefinitely and I do so because it's a good chance for us to see capacity and how people have improved in their GHD sit-ups. Um, we've had 180 given to us for the first time that we did see them in uh, this type of competition from CrossFit two years ago. Um, my hope is that it's something that we actually did earlier this week um, on training systems. It was written about three months ago in the hopes that we would see this combination. Luckily enough, we're seeing this combination right now as just a two component pairing. And for this workout, we've got for time 500 meter row, 1000 meter row, 2000 meter row, 60, 40, 20 GHD setups for a total of 120. Um, I think that the other side of the coin could be a five rounds for time, 500 meter row and 30 GHD sit-ups. I do think that this time domain is going to be somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes, maybe with a 25 minute time cap, depending on the capacity and, and abilities of uh, the person completing it. And I, and I would give the discrepancy of time domain here because the females, I believe, will be rowing the same amount of distance as the males. However, the target time for the females is just going to be extended somewhat. I do think that there's going to be somewhere between 120 and 150 GHD sit-ups. And I cannot see us rowing any less than 2.5K uh, or even 2,000 meters. It might be something like 2,000 meter row, 120 uh, GHDs for time. Um, so... Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the way that that one's written. I think that, again, that it is the long time domain. It's got no barbell in it. Um, it's, it's so non-complicated. It's pretty straightforward and it, and it just bodes uh, capacity, capacity, capacity. Consistency and skill technique. How, how well can you maintain your shape on the rowing machine when your midline's gone? And how big can you hold your, your, your sets of GHDs unbroken? Um, if you're dropping your speed somewhat on the GHDs, at that point it may be time to take a break. But just remember that if you can get through those GHDs, a slow rower is faster than a rowing machine that's not rowing at all, okay? The last workout here, um, this is really just guesswork. There's three implements, you've got a barbell, a rope and a rig. First of all, I don't really like this workout for the t floor layout. I know that we're gonna have some people screaming out for floor plans on this one, um, ourselves included, we've been um, around for eight years now in the competitive scene uh, as a as a gym um, and in the gym we still don't have a 15 foot rope that's attached to the rig so our ropes are hanging from the ceiling in the middle of the floor um, I don't know if that's going to be a hindrance to um, you know transition times or do we need that extra couple of meters walk just to recover a little bit. Are you gonna come down off your rope climb and jump straight up to your bar uh, on the rig transition or back to your bar, but whatever rotation it is, I'm unsure, so I don't think it'll be too effective uh, or too costly for some a, a gym like ours, but I definitely can assume that there are going to be gyms that um, are going to struggle with this layout and set up altogether. There might be ropes outside, there might be a rig outside, I don't know, but I don't know if this is the best type of layout and so could we have avoided this particular workout altogether perhaps and still had a great um, quarterfinals. The barbell here I think that we're either looking at thruster, deadlift, power snatch, front squat, overhead squat. Uh, I know that's a lot of options. Um, I can't see this last final day being a workout over 10 minutes long and um, what we could see, we know it's either going to be a legless rope climb or a regular rope climb. We're yet to see a legless rope climb in the quarterfinals. It's only at that next stage. Um, and I think that we can also cross off the list of toaster bar just because of the amount of GHCs that we've done the day before. So it's either going to be chest bar, regular pull-ups or bar muscle-ups. I would probably take regular pull-ups off the list because of the lower complexity of that. And so now you're looking at chest bars and bar muscle-ups. If it's chest bars, higher end of the rep scheme, if it's bar muscle ups, it's probably gonna come down a little bit when it's coupled with the rope climbs. I think fortunate enough for us as a training unit, we've been training the combination of rope climbs with chest bars, rope climbs with bar muscle ups, ring muscle ups throughout the last uh, six to 12 weeks. So we understand what it feels like in, the, in, 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 in uh, mixing those modalities together. Um, I think that we, a, a classic, classic CrossFit combination, thrust the rope climb. So it's pretty hard to look away from that, too far away from that, which if it is that scenario, would mean to me that we're looking at a heavier clean and jerk burpee box jump over, 
on test uh, three, I believe it was. And then, so we can probably assume that we're looking at something like a 15, 12, 9 thruster, 61, uh, sorry, 135 and 95 pound for the male, female. It's either five, four, three regular rope climbs, maybe three, two, one uh, legless rope climbs, and then something like 12, nine, six or nine, six, three bar muscle ups. Now the bar muscle ups, could they be in a higher capacity? Yes, but would they be there if the rope climbs uh, were there? Perhaps not. So that's something to consider. Um, the other side of it is, if we are doing thrusters earlier on, I think that this could be the clean and jerks, uh, potentially overhead squats, so five, four, three, two, one, uh, clean and jerks, and this could be a 185 barbell, maybe um, 205 barbell, maybe for males, uh, five, four, three, two, one, rope climbs with the maybe set of 15 chest of bars at the completion of each um, working set. Now, I think the first thing to note for me, well, it's not the first thing, but one of the, 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 the notable things here is that there's no test that screams out, hey, this is testing strict strength, uh, raw strength, or um, there's no just individual rack set up, just barbell on the floor or anything like that. So it makes me wonder if there's an ascending barbell load, um, but then it also makes me question that that first workout could very well be a King Kong variation and there goes your heavy barbell in the deadlift. Um, this work, th th this set of workouts, these set of workouts scream to me high level gymnastics. Now, again, hearing the, the noise and I guess the um, reviews from the open, People maybe maybe suggested that we had a little too much high school gymnastics, so that's why I would assume in that first workout that we might not see handstand walking because you would have ring muscle ups, wall handstand push ups, uh, plus handstand walking. Three of the four components that are in that workout as high school gymnastics. So that to me says something like a shuttle run, um, and then double unders. You can you can, I mean you categorize, categorize that into monostructural dumbbell snatch. We do like a dumbbell snatch combination with a double under. Um, we had the double unders and regular snatches in the open. So you're just taking uh, one of those movements, a bilateral barbell movement into a unilateral snatch. Um, however, again, I think that to consider a single arm devil's press, Workout three, don't overcomplicate it. It's just a couplet here um, and it's capacity and how, how, how much high power output that you can sustain. I don't think that necessarily you see the fittest person win this. You could see also a strong person who has enough capacity in a five minute time domain also make it to that finish line and you'll meet at that, at that point or uh, intersection. Workout four, long time domain, be prepared to row long, do lots of GHDs and then workout five, high complexity, very high complexity, um, very strategical um, day five or so day three workout five I think that you may be looking at potentially repeating at the last moment again the day prior to uh, submissions um, because you can learn a lot about this workout and although your body is beat up you may be better off another day after having done those GHDs um, in that such capacity prior but my hope is that this um, has been beneficial for you. We will have all of our warm-up strategies, tips and tricks um, when the workouts come, come out and we'll get them online as soon as possible. We do hope that uh, you are following along the Six Foot Army's journey. We have, I think, around 150 plus people that are in the quarterfinals across our whole wider community of 64 Army or 64 Training Systems uh, through all of our affiliates, all of our individual programming around the world and also at HQ uh, here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, I don't think there's too much else to say. Uh, the more you talk, I think the more you can get it wrong. But um, yeah, again, we hope that this, uh, this helped you somewhat and uh, we look forward to two days time getting into those tests and being a part of your journey and uh, looking at the outcome really and what's going to happen through the semi-finals. Cheers.